QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, adjusting entry accounts receivable sales with the help of Excel. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We're going to be talking about an accounts receivable or sales type of adjusting entries. It could often be called like a cutoff period type of adjusting entry process. To think about it, let's first open up our report. So we're going to go to the reports dropdown. We're going to go to the company and financials. Let's take a look at our balance sheet standard, changing the dates up top. Um, customizing them from 010121 to 022821 February 28th being our cutoff date closing that back out there's where we stand as of this point reports drop down to get to the P&L company and financial profit and loss let's open up the profit and loss for 010121 to 022821 so we are imagining a situation now if i go back over to the home page where we have a, an invoice that was entered after the cutoff date, even though the work was done before the cutoff date. So let's just think about this flow process and how this might work. Note that when, when QuickBooks records the sales, they typically record it on an accrual basis with the use of the invoice, because the invoice is the form that will be input that will be closest to when the actual work was done. But there's no perfect method. The software can't do a perfect accrual accounting method because it's dependent on some type of point in time when some data was entered into the system. So in other words, if you enter the invoice into the system, usually the invoice is entered into the system after the work was done, even if you have not yet received payment. Therefore, QuickBooks will, will record the sale at that point in time. But we can imagine many situations where the invoice will not be recorded uh, right after the work was done. So for example, in like a, a job cost system for like an accounting firm or a law firm or something like that, we can imagine we have a whole staff of people who would have to give us our timesheets every week or every month or every couple of weeks. And then we're going to have to generate our invoices with them as we did with our guitar instructor kind of examples here in a job cost type of system. To do that, that means it's going to lag that the, the time that we make the invoice is going to be after the time period that the work was actually done. And if we were to record this on a pure accrual accounting system, we'd have a cutoff kind of problem there. We'd have to look at look at that invoice and say, hey, look, that invoice was was created in this case after the cutoff. We can we're imagining in, in March, but we need to pull it back before the cutoff because the work was actually done, even though the invoice wasn't created in February. So that's going to be our standard our standard kind of cutoff problem. This is this is often something that auditors have to kind of look into this cutoff type of problem as well. Now, we're going to imagine a situation where, where we're actually selling inventory in a similar type of situation because I want to just show the, the, the procedure that's a little bit more complex when we have to deal with cost of goods sold and inventory for this kind of problem. So in, the, in that case, if it was inventory, typically we have completed the work with inventory when we have shipped the inventory, right? When the inventory has gone out, then that's when we completed the work. If for whatever reason, with the, the inventory had had gone out before the cutoff before February 28th and then we didn't create the invoice until after the cutoff then uh, once again we would have that problem it's it's kind of a little bit more unusual for that to be the case with inventory than with like a, a job cost type of system that we just talked about but again it could happen with an inventory kind of system and it's a little bit more complex of a journal entry so we want to show that more complex type of scenario so that's going to be what we're going to say here. We're going to we're going to go to the if you go to the profit and loss, we're going to say, hey, uh, the, the income isn't complete here because there's some invoice that was was created in March that we need to pull back into the current time period under the revenue recognition principle because the work was done in this time period, even though the invoice was created in the following time period. To do this, we're actually going to create the invoice in the following time period and then pull it back into the current time period. So let's let's do that process. I'm gonna to go to the home tab. So right now, this isn't the adjusted entry. This is us entering the invoice that we're gonna pull back with a journal entry. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's create an invoice and let's, let's, make, let's create the invoice for Anderson. So I'm gonna say it's going to Anderson Guitars and I'm gonna say the invoice went out as of 03, let's say 05, 03, 05, 21. So that's after the cutoff date even though we're imagining the, the inventory was shipped 
before the cutoff date or if it was work the work was done before the cutoff date and then I'm going to tab down here and we're going to say that this is going to be a Gibson so a Gibson USA guitar which is going to sell one of them and so there we have it so now we're going to say okay when I record this invoice what's going to happen on this invoice well we know it's a it's an invoice so accounts receivable is going to go up the other side is going to be going to sales which is going to be this 399 the difference is going to increase the sales tax cost of goods sold uh, will also be going up and inventory will be going down for an amount not on this invoice as we've seen a few times let's check it out let's say save and close and i'm going to close this out uncheck this and try it again save and close and then let's check this out i'm going to go to the balance sheet and now i'm going to change the date to 0305 uh, 21 to, to see this invoice we have put in place it's going to be in the accounts receivable i'm going to so there there it is if i double click on it we're going to say there's the total amount the 399 that is owed to us and then we're going to go to the profit and loss and let's see it just for the for the uh, month of march let's go 0301 uh let's go 030521 to 030521 and just see that so here's the sales, double clicking on the sales, double clicking on that item. That's for the amount we charged, not including the sales tax. Sales tax is going to be on the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is going to be sales tax will be included in the sales tax payable. So we have the sales tax payable. And then the other side is going to be inventory going down. So inventory up top is going to be going down. So we see that by the 304, not an amount on the invoice. And then the last side of it is going to be going to the profit and loss for the cost of goods sold. There's the cost of goods sold. So that whole thing was recorded. All those transactions were, were recorded, uh, at, but they were recorded after the cutoff. And we've determined now that the sales, that whole thing should be pulled back before the cutoff because it actually was sold before the cutoff. Now you might be saying, well, why don't I just double click on that and I'll just change the date. In QuickBooks, you can kind of do that. You can go back in there and just change the date to something before the cutoff. But uh, typically, you don't want to do that in like a full service accounting system because you don't you don't want to change things that have already been recorded typically. And you might have some issues with payments that have been received and the ordering in which those payments have been received and when the invoice went out. So typically, and especially as you're going to tie the inventory, the invoice to the payment and to the deposit, you probably don't want to be changing just change the date. And, and that's not normally what you would want to do. And that's not, you know, the proper accounting process typically to do. So what we're going to do as an adjusting entry is we're going to pull this transaction into the current time period uh, with an adjusting entry with debits and credits, basically. And this will be like the most complex adjusting entry we will have. And then we'll reverse it right after that so that we don't have it double, doubled up in the following period. So let's see what that looks like on a, on a worksheet type of format. So... Let's open up, let's go ahead and open up our invoice again. So I'll open up the invoice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the journal entry related to this invoice uh, as an adjusting entry as of the cutoff date to pull this transaction before the cutoff. And you'll note that once we do that, it'll be in there twice as of the point in time this invoice is as of 3.05. That means we'll have to reverse it the day after, after the cutoff so that it, once we get to this point in time, we'll be correct again. So let's check it out like in Excel. So we're gonna go, okay, let's, let's look at it in Excel. I'm gonna call this uh, ADJ, we're gonna say number three. And so this invoice is gonna say, that's gonna cause an increase in accounts receivable. So accounts receivable is gonna be going up by the 380, what was it? It was like, uh, 399 by the 399 the other side is going to be going to sales so sales is going to be going up for merchandise and that's going to be a credit in terms of debits and credits is an increase for the uh that's going to be the 380 i'm going to put credits as negative 380 and the difference is going to be sales tax payable sales tax payable is going to be the difference there and I'm going to, I'm going to ungreen these, these items. Let's ungreen these. These shouldn't be green anymore. And I'm going to ungreen this item. And so that's going to be the difference. I'm going to say negative sum or the plug, or you can get it from our, our data over here. 
which is obviously that 19. Then we also know that that this is going to be decreasing. I'm going to close this out. Uh, the inventory by the 304, which is not on the invoice, but we but it's going to be recorded with the invoice. And you might think of this as another journal entry. So you could say like inventory. I'll, I'll put it on the bottom. Inventory and the top is going to be. Well, let's do it this way. Inventory <laughs> is going to go down, and cost of goods sold is going to be the other side there for the 304. The 304. So you can think of it basically as two journal entries. It's easier to kind of look at that way. And then you could have the debits and credits lined up. Uh, but it's going to happen at the same time because it's a perpetual inventory system. So if I record this out, then the accounts receivable is going to go up. So accounts receivable is going to go up. We have the sales down here is going to go up. I know I'm doing this quickly, but I just I know this isn't an Excel course, but it's it's easier to see these transactions in Excel. And then the sales tax payable is going to go up. And then the cost of goods sold down here is going to go up. And the inventory asset up top, the inventory asset is going to go down. So the accounts affected then are here. I'll make it green. We got the accounts receivable. We've got the, uh, the inventory asset. We've got the sales tax payable is affected. And we have uh, the sales and the cost of goods sold. So that's what we expect to happen. So we've, and that's actually what did happen. However, it just happened after the cutoff date. And we want to pull it over so that it's in the cutoff date so that our financial statements will be correct as of February 28th. So once I do that, once we enter this in, you'll note that as of March 5th, when they act, when we actually when the invent when the invoice was actually input, it will have been entered twice unless we do the reversing entry. So this is what we're going to do, but we're going to have to we're going to have to do it. We're going to have a few different problems when we do this in QuickBooks. So we'll do this in QuickBooks. We're going to have a few different problems that we need to be aware of. Uh, and notice this is important too because if you talk to somebody like a like an accounting department that does the adjusting entries and creates the financial statements, they might do this entry and not really see the problem. So, I mean, when you, when, when you go back to your normal bookkeeping process, they just made it correct for the financial statements as of the end of the time period. So some of the problems when you try to go from the bookkeeping process to this adjusting process, so if, like, for example, if I'm the auditor or if I'm doing taxes or, or an adjusting entry, I'm just going to do this in my books and make the financial statements from these numbers. But if I don't enter this transaction into the system, then the system's not right as of that point in time. And, and if I uh, enter it into the accounting system, that means it's going to be double input if I don't reverse it as of the point in time the actual invoice was created on March 5th in our case. So therefore, we have to do a reversing entry. So we're going to have to do a reversing entry to make that cutoff uh, nice between the bookkeeping and the adjusting department. Also note, we have some complications with the fact that there's going to be accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. So it's not like I can just debit the accounts receivable in the QuickBooks system because it, it won't let me do a journal entry to accounts receivable without assigning a customer. So when I do this journal entry, I'm going to have the problem of assigning a customer. I may have that problem with the sales tax payable too because sales tax is a payable kind of account, a vendor type of account. So they might not allow me to post to sales tax payable unless I assign. Uh, a customer and the fact that the sales tax payable which is down here is tied to like the widget that little widget that calculates the sales tax means that you might not want to post something to sales tax that does that's outside the normal kind of accumulation and payment of sales tax so you might even need to record this in a separate account might be the safest thing to do in quickbooks so you don't mess up you know the, the process that the quickbooks uses and and so those are those, and then of course the inventory also has some inventory that's going to be tracked in a sub ledger so i can't just enter a journal entry to post to inventory because it might mess up my sub ledger so i want to make sure that when i do this transaction i don't mess up the basically the sub ledger or at least i know what exactly is going on with the sub ledgers so again complications when i enter this into quickbooks there's a sub ledger by customer for accounts receivable there may be a sub ledger by account for the sales tax payable and i don't want to mess up the widget for accounts payable when I enter this and there's a sub ledger for the inventory, 
that I don't want to mess up by just posting it to the inventory. So we'll take a look at those problems uh, when we when we do post this <laughs> in the following presentation into uh, QuickBooks.